Remember you gave me spores, like an image of spores blown up for As a Christmas? <laughs> As a you were gonna give me something else too, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Terrible again. Now let's talk chemistry. Of course, your character is eventually married on the show. But the relationship started off a little bit rocky, and we talked a lot this weekend about character arcs and how important that is to television shows. Uh, so what, what was it like when the relationship morphed, and, and how was it, Michaela, to, to establish chemistry with your co-star here? I mean, so difficult. <laughs> Um, I, I really like the way they handled it because they were co-workers, you know, when, when the series began and sort of like a, had a brother or sister sort of relationship, I think with Zach and Hodgins and Angela, it was sort of like, oh God, these guys are like my, my brothers, but it's sort of, you know, like people meet at work and I think they fell in love and had kind of a rocky road, you know, and got married and... Well, we didn't get married the first. We almost got married, then broke up, then got back together. I don't know. I can't keep track. But I thought it was—I um, don't know. I thought I thought it was really. It was so much fun. We had so we had so many different seasons of different sections of our relationship. You know, it was fun. Well, just like real life, we are. I think the tumultuous relationships and the depth that that people go through, and that yeah. it was messy at times, and that echoed. I think a lot of what people go through, and I think that, again, is why audiences connect with those characters. Yeah, those things. We have fun. We have fun. TJ, I wanted to ask you, um, is it true that you were an extra in Forrest Gump? Yeah. Tell us about that. I mean, obviously, Tom Hanks won an Oscar, Robert Zemeckis. Uh, what was that process like? Uh, I was young, and I was fascinated with movies, and I heard that they were coming to the town that I lived in, and so, we, yeah. So were you in the scene where he's running out onto the football field? Yes, yeah. We were holding up signs like, go, Forrest, go. Did you know this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it was really neat. Yeah. Did you see yourself in the movie? I mean, no, but I <laughs> had curly hair. It was like, that's me. <laughs> that really we'll take your word for it. All right, let's open up to some questions. Uh, we'll start over here. Go ahead. Hi, my name's Teresa. My question's for TJ. What is the grossest thing they ever made you climb into? <laughs> That's a great question. They really climb into also. Like, not like I mean, when you said that, I thought about the bathtub, that like the dead oh, gooey yeah. body that yeah. was in the bathtub, and then Jack is like hanging out in his room, and you come in, and I'm just laying in yes. the tub after yeah, I cleaned yeah. up. Um, there were some pretty bad dumpsters that were <laughs> real dumpsters that I thought, oh, this doesn't smell right, <laughs> which is fine, but after, you know, hours of shooting it, you just thought, oh god, this is terrible. Um, there was a lot of yucky in, in, that, uh, in that little show for Jack. We were just having this conversation, I was having this conversation earlier with someone where he asked, um, you know, with, with the goo and stuff, like, did you just do all that in one take? And it was like, oh, I wish. Like, every time something dropped on me, inevitably it was like, oh, the light was out, we have to do it again. Like, you know, we didn't get the right angle, and so, you know, take 15, and I was like, oh, David, we got David once. David came into the Uki room, uh, Booth came into the Uki room at one point, and uh, you guys probably remember the episode more than I do, but he, like, steps in front of something, and we pull, uh, a trigger and you just get scooed, like, just like, like, so much goo. And we loaded that machine with so much extra goo. <laughs> because we knew he would only do one take. <laughs> they put, like, three cameras, and he was all kind of excited. He was like, I can do this, like, you guys get to do this all the time. And he came in, and we just launched that thing. <laughs> it was all in his, his mouth, and his mouth. he was covered. And he was like, that's all you get. I'm going to change. And we were like, yes, we got one. So, that's a lot of goo. Yeah. That's fine. Thank uh, you. I should have mentioned as well, guys, you can uh, adjust the, uh, the mics there to, to your uh, height requirement or whatever. Don't worry about it. They're, they're really uh, easy to, to change. And we'll take a question from this one now. Yeah, I had to adjust the mic. I'm really short. Um, uh, so my question kind of is a bit of two parts. Um, so your guys is like your character's relationship was kind of insane all the way through the show. People think that you know Booth and Bones had the all this stuff happen to them, but you guys had the craziest kind of stuff. So my question is, is like you guys had a lot of like really important, memorable moments. So like, what was your favorite and least favorite of all that? <laughs> <laughs> I 
such good questions. You should start with that one. <laughs> I want to hear what he's going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I loved the swing set scene. I, I loved the scene, but more than that, I loved sitting on those swings with you in between takes, and we were just getting to know each other, and it was late at night, and, and the crew was kind of standing up, and we were really just kind of gently rocking back and forth in the swings, getting to know about each other. I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen each other so long. We haven't so, seen each other in a while. I think that was my favorite. I think that was probably my favorite. The, the least favorite? I mean, as an actor, I loved when there was drama and, and conflict. Um, but I don't know, as a fan of their relationship, my least favorite was any time like, Angie was starting to see other people, and we thought that it was over. Which is just all the time. That's such a nice answer. Oh my god, Roxy, yes. Um, I really like the scene where, with the Grave Digger episode, where Angela invites Hodgins to stay. That was, that was a really beautiful scene, and I think the beginning really of really seeing them as a real couple. Um, I can't think of any unfavorite ones. I don't know. That Grave Digger scene um, was not in the original script. <clears throat> we shot the whole episode, and then they called Michaela and I on Halloween, and it was Halloween day, and so we came in that night and I brought candy for you. Halloween is TJ's favorite holiday. Yeah. And we celebrated Halloween together. We shot that scene. I remember that. He brought a little candy for me. But that was a good scene. That was a good call. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot that we did that. Monkey a Right on. Let's take a question from over here now. Go ahead. Questions. Uh, hi. I'm Jess. Uh, the English one. Um, <laughs> how many times were there in between scenes where people, like the cast, would just start to mess around with things? Because like in the background of one of the episodes, if you watch, when they're just kind of panning across the main forensics platform, you can just see an x-ray of Homer Simpson's brain. <laughs> how often was there stuff like that, or people just laying out on the tables? Always. <laughs> Every single scene. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> really. We would get in trouble. For, we were laughing. We got all the in trouble time. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think because the subject matter, you know, you're shooting these scenes over. The, the, you know, the Jaeger brothers who did the bodies for the show are so talented. So the, the bodies were so real, and you know, they come in and just dump more guts and blood all over. It's like six o'clock in the morning, and you're shooting these scenes. I think we really had to laugh about it, and and then all of us actually genuinely really laugh a lot, so it just, that was most of our shooting. <laughs> <laughs> but there was this moment, I, I've talked about this before, there was this moment that always happened on that set, I don't know that I've, I've seen it on many sets I've been on, where <laughs> we would all be, <laughs> we would just be like, knee deep in conversation of like, like how we are now, like, how was your weekend, and Emily's like, it was great, we're doing this, and while we're like, giddy, and playing, and laughing, and joking, you hear the crew like, okay, rolling, okay, take take five, okay, ready, and and literally to like the T in action, we were still like, and then blah, 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 and they say, like, action, and we just <laughs> dropped into, so we took this to the other day, I mean, it was amazing, I never, like, I, that always fascinated me, and then they say, cut, and we'd be like, and then, um, after that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right on, okay, we'll take a question from over here, go ahead. Hi. Hi. I'm a aspect artist, uh, and I was wondering what your favorite um, like prosthetic piece or favorite makeup that you got done, or like some kind of effects thing you had on the show, because there's yeah. a lot of them. It was really good. Yeah. It's your baby. Oh yeah, the baby. Well, that was just a, like you know strapped belly. But didn't you have like a worm? Wasn't there like a worm? Oh, that was pretty 
Yeah. What was the world's name? What did it mean? Jefferson! Yes. Jefferson. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So tell us about the word for people that aren't uh, familiar with it very quickly. Was this yeah. like a tape for me? No, he was a bot fly. He was a bot fly. Bot fly. <laughs> <laughs> it was so gross. It was um, gross. I mean, Hodgins loved it, but he gave birth to a, to a, a bot fly. He got, he had a, oh my god. Yes, he was. That's enough. <laughs> um, Did you have any other mistakes, though? Uh, yeah, I mean, my eyebrows got stinged off a few oh, times. Yeah. There was a whole episode where they got stinged off early on, and we ended up deciding in the editing room, they were like, we're not gonna talk about that. And so I was like, wait, what? So there's actually an episode where I just don't have eyebrows. And all this was like, and it was never talked about. And then later on, they were like, oh, let's, let's, you know, do that again. And I was like, oh, my God. Um, I always think of his answer question. I always think about. I did How the Grinch Stole Christmas for six months with Ron Howard and and worked with uh, Rick Baker. I was too Luhu in that, so I got to do three and a half hours worth of prosthetic makeup every day for six months with that team. And it's such a detailed, amazing uh, experience. And you get you bond really. Um, you, you you inevitably bond with not only the prosthetic itself, but um, the makeup artist. So that's such an awesome. Uh, industry, so I think that's so cool that that's what you do. Um, yeah, we had a lot of it on the show. I mean, a lot of people were wearing things. There were a few bodies, only a handful, that were real actors, and they did such a good job with makeup. We would, as Michaela was saying, uh, we were always talking with these dead bodies and goo and stuff. That's true, it would be weird when they'd sit up. <laughs> <laughs> teasing a little bit that you were going to recover, but did they already decide that you were going to stay in the chair until the end of the series at that point? We talked about this, so I was actually chatting with some people earlier today about this also. He, there was a script where he was going to just get up and be fine again at some point, and I really just, I don't, I didn't want that to happen. I, I really tried to fight against that, and, and I think they inevitably, you know, we all kind of said, yeah, no, no, this is the better way to go. It's just, you know, there are so many people in our lives that, that struggle with so many different things and and to be in a position as an actor to be then chair bound and have the opportunity to, I don't know, maybe lend a voice to individuals that have to deal with such things and such struggles was an honor to me and I didn't want to remove that just for some happy-go-lucky network television ending and so I, and I really honor our writing team that they listened to that and, and were able to allow Jack to not only be in the chair, but go through all of the emotions that one would, and then I think ultimately come to a beautiful place that chair or not, he's loved and loves and his life will go on exactly as it, it should. And he's a happy, very able person. So, so yeah, thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, yeah, that was a real honor. Yeah, great question there. All right, take one from this side now. Go ahead. Hi, TJ. Hi, Michaela. Hi. 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 Um, my question is, I kind of had this conversation with you guys yesterday. Um, Michaela, um, I talked to you about how I originally wanted to go into forensics because I was inspired by people like you and Brennan because you were both females in high positions in forensics, which is predominantly, you know, male dominated and I wanted to ask you how do you feel knowing that you've helped inspire young girls everywhere to pursue their career in forensics? I mean that is single-handedly one of the greatest things that's happened in the last few years I think because of Netflix and you know these streaming services um, that are showing you know it's these young girls are being exposed to the show that literally were not born I think when we started show, or just you know very very little but I can't, even at this, at Fan Expo, the amount of people who have come, you know, girls between 13 and 16, who say that they're so inspired by that and want to go into a science field is just so incredible to me. I, it's mind-blowing and so cool, right? I mean, how great is that? I think just to have strong women on TV every week, um, you know, in, we always say that our offices on the show were bigger than 
then the man, well, you didn't even have that. Did you have one of these? No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Yuki room. Yeah, the room, that's true. But they, there's just something, I think, really um, unconscious that gets into girls' brains when they see these women who are, these complicated women who are very good at their jobs and they're really smart and they have multiple degrees, although Angela did not have multiple degrees. <laughs> But that's okay. <laughs> Everyone else did. But um, anyway, I think it's uh, it's wonderful. Yeah. All right, over here. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Margaret, and I've got a question about the squints that you worked with throughout the show, and the one that you guys did about 9/11, and what was it like working with Betty White? <laughs> <laughs> Betty did this thing to me. <laughs> We were taking a picture with the crew, because everyone was so excited to have her. And we had one of those clapboards, you know, that you kind of mark a scene so that the sound is synced up, you know, take four, clap. And she was sitting down, and I was standing near her, and she wanted that clapboard kind of held open. So I was like, here, Betty, I'll do it for you, Kenny. So she just kind of had her hands, like, on the clapboard, but I had it, you know, open. And at one point, like, we're about to take the photo, and she just pulls her fingers away, and she's like, ow, ow. And she looked at me, and then the entire crew turned <laughs> And I'm like, hey, I didn't do anything. And she started, like, nursing her finger, and I was like, I did nothing. And everyone was so mad at me. And then she just winked at me, and I was like, this is In terms of the squints, I mean, they are like our best friends. I mean, that was like so great once we got our recurring uh, squint turns coming into the show. It was, it just brought such joy to the show on set and I think on screen. I mean, they just livened up what we had going already and, and all of them are so dear yeah, to us. Yeah, they're just the best people. They really hire they really all like, of them. Like, they're just so funny and smart <laughs> and great. Beyond talented, and yeah. every one of them is going to be a huge star. And like, I'm so proud of them all. Like, it's yeah, we're family. I mean, for sure. You know. <laughs> all right. Let's take one from over here. Hi, um, Leanne here. Uh, yeah. I had two questions. One was, where was the inspirations for Hodgins being slightly uh, obsessed with? Conspiracy theories and everything like that. Was that going to be what Zach was you know, turned into? Was that supposed to be you? And then the second question was from the beginning were you two supposed to end up together, or was it because of the chemistry of you two working together so well? And obviously, of all of you that turned out to be making you guys into such a healthy relationship throughout the show. Great question. <laughs> um, do you want to? Um. <laughs> so, with Zach, no, I don't think Zach was, I don't think it was that Jack kind of adopted anything from Zach. I think Zach was himself and stayed that character throughout and, and uh, uh, we loved Zach so much. We fought so hard to get Zach kind of back into the, the lab for a really long time. So I was happy when he did get to appear in later, later shows and things. Jack was always kind of the conspiracy theorist. I, I, his passion, I, I don't know. I, I always looked at Hodgins as, as a mad scientist. He was a he was a he had three advanced degrees in entomology, botany, and mineralogy, and he had anger management issues as a mad scientist. And so there's this passion that kind of comes with that, you know, uh, love of all things. So I think that's where uh, his enthusiasm comes from. <laughs> He's like me with that. I just get excited about things. Um, <laughs> And in our relationship, you want to take that one? Um, yeah, uh, the question was, was it written in? Was that the question? Well, was it originally written in as you two being, going from mother-sister relationship to being married? Or was that written in as, I think, most of the fans I don't it? think, I don't, I'm not sure what Hart's long-term goal was. I can't speak for him. Maybe he had that in his mind. Um, I don't know, but certainly when we started in the first season, it was not. Um, they were co-workers and that was it. So. Um, yeah, I felt like it kind of, it, we sort of, I don't know, we helped it along, I guess, but, um, yeah, no, it was not on the page in season one, no. 
didn't like Angela think Booth was real sexy in season oh, one? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, in my audition for the role, uh, it was a scene early on when we were talking about uh, Brendan's book. Um, and I remember just rattling through a lot of like terminology in the audition, like, yes, but after an appeal and tetronic sort of kind. But anyway, you really think I'm lusty? Like, he, she was talking about Hodgins in this book. And, so I kind of played him going in that he had a crush on Brennan. Yeah, that's right. But then it was kind of like, oh no, that that's this show's gonna go. Like there's more episodes than this. And so at some point we identified that, okay, clearly this is kind of will they, won't they with Booth and Brennan, but there wasn't a solid uh, relationship on the show at that point. And so we talked quite a bit and we started without it being on the page, flirting, our characters, like flirting a little bit with each other, a little bit, like noticing each other. And and so I think Hart and the team, as you said, they probably already had it like in their minds where they were gonna go. They're too good of writers not to, but but no, I think we, we just kind of wanted there to be something to play. And so we found like, oh, maybe we can flirt with each other. And we, we were, we, all of our scenes were together. Yeah. Um, they always had Angela and Hodgins together. Um, so I think it organically kind of Boredom is a powerful thing. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Boredom is a powerful thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, we'll take one over here. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, this question is for TJ. Um, my friend Christine found an episode of Friends that showed you as a doctor. <laughs> Can you Not comment on that? Yeah. Can you comment on that? That particular scene. Doctor Owen, I played the doctor that was delivering Phoebe's triplets in the hundredth episode of Friends. And I and they were improvising as we went on. She called me Doogie at one point and that was like a, an improvisation. I was like really giddy and excited as a doctor and she was like Doogie. Um, and they liked that one the most. Um, but I remember being on that show and I remember like hanging out with like Matthew Perry and these guys and it was the hundredth episode and there was this big cake and and I remember just being this like young actor watching them and saying, gosh, I, I, that's what I want. Like one day, I want to be one of them. I want to be cutting a hundredth episode cake. And we got to cut two. This one's also for TJ. Uh, in the series finale, your character finds out that he's going to you the king of the lab. Yeah! Lively! <laughs> <laughs> but you were reading the script and you saw that line that you were going to be in charge while uh, she was gone. What was your reaction like? I'm still excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> He's still the king. Um, to be able to play that with you guys early on with Eric and to see it go from, you know, the first season all the way to the end and have that payoff was amazing. Um, and there was a moment too, because that was one of the very last things we shot, I think it may have been, where I'm being goofy and I'm, I'm dancing around in the chair, yelling king of, like, king, king of the lab, but I'm, the camera's kind of pulling back and I'm doing laps around the lab. And, <laughs> but I'm getting to do this and all the while, Emily Deschanel, Tamara Taylor, and Michaela Conlon are sitting on the steps of our home for 12 years looking at me and genuinely laughing and I think it was just probably one of my greatest scenes just to be like wow like this is this is how it all ends and it was a great way to end the show to, to end up with the crown <laughs> <laughs> okay over here go ahead serial killer storyline was and then also what the hardest loss of a character was on the show for you guys personally not necessarily the actor but Sweet. And, um, and uh, Ryan Cartwright, you know, Vincent Nigel Murray said, was, was pretty rough. Um, but, you know, we worked with John Francis Daly for more years, and um, it was just, just a hard one to shoot and to hear about and read about, and, you know, yeah, that one was hard. And the, and Pallant, I, I would say, was definitely my, he was so creepy. <laughs> was so creepy. Right? <laughs> Serial killer, I think for me was Grave Digger, just because yeah. I, 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 I liked that arc and I like what happened to Hodgins and, and the team during that. I liked that episode, how we all kind of came together. It was just 
It's like a little movie. I really like that one, and then where that kind of went. Um, but yeah, I mean, sweets sweet is death. I, I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> it's just, yeah, that was hard. That was so hard. I mean, not just watching, but it, uh, yeah, yeah. We love John. And he's doing so well, so it was better for him, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll let you come forward this time. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Michelle. Uh, or TJ, did you do anything in preparation for being in the wheelchair so that your legs wouldn't move? Yeah, so that's a great question. So yes, quite a lot actually, and, and worked with a lot of friends in, in chairs and, and uh, quite a bit of research. Um, and there was this desperate desire on my part to make sure that I wasn't um, uh, moving, and I definitely didn't want to know. We had conversations about this that I, I, it, I never wanted to be the actor that like shoots a scene in the chair, and then I'm like, oh, let me grab an orange juice really quick, and you know, stand <laughs> up, like a crafter. So I stayed in the chair for um, the entire time I was on set. I mean, we tried to set it up where um, Lisa Mack, um, our our props uh, master, would would have the chair waiting for me by my, my room, if you will, in the morning. So as soon as I got to work, no one would see me, except for you guys kind of quickly um, before that. But the cast would see me quickly, but the crew didn't see me walk for, for a year and a half or so. And so the final episode, I, I kind of stood up to say thank you to everyone. We were, we were doing a little speech, and, and a lot of people were like, whoa, like, it's just, they got something used to me being in the chair, but your body, you know, is an amazing thing, and it will inevitably start to atrophy uh, parts that you're not using, much like bed sores and things, so it was this trippy thing that started happening where as soon as I would sit in the chair, within five minutes, I could feel my body saying, oh, he's not going to use legs for the next 12 to 15 hours, so we're just going to shut those off, and I could feel like I would, I would really have to do a lot of warming up ahead of time, and then a lot of... Uh, um, exercise afterwards to make sure that I was still sending blood flow there because yeah they just would shut off so um, that was that was hard. <laughs> Alright guys we're running out of time so we only have uh, time for two more questions. Oh, no. We'll do one here and then one over here and then we're going to do something very special oh. and turn the tables yeah, a little bit. Questions are there. Can we haul butt through them? <laughs> <laughs> If you keep the one question each, and I'll, I'll answer your questions, so we'll stay it fast. Everyone should be able to answer. Go for it, over there. Thank you so much. Sorry. Hi there. Um, my name is Michaela. It's really... Oh, Hello. Oh, hi. Uh, I was just wondering, it's a very stereotypical question. I apologize. But did you have a favorite line for like, all the seasons that just stuck with you? Are you asking me? Both of you. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, yes, I feel like I really did, and of course none of them are coming to mind right now. Um, Sweetie? <laughs> yeah, I'd be okay to maybe not say that again. Um, uh, Boots a good band. Boots a good band. You know, we were going to do a drinking game on the show whenever one, a character said Booth is a good man. Someone had to take a shot. Um, oh, God, none of them are coming to you. You want to go first? King of the Loud. I think, um, you know what you people lack? Whimsy. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a real. Uh, than a monkey with a puppy. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that is some good ones. Alright, let's get to you over, over, over here. You can just bring the mic down if you want. Yeah. Hi. Right. Um, who's your favorite out of like, um, like, <laughs> who is your favorite out of like Brennan and Booth? Oh. <laughs> as, as characters? Yeah. yeah, and also, like, like... <laughs> 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 I'm going to go with the good one. Oh, I think our flight is also... Oh. Not getting it. I believed you. That's how gullible I am. Yeah, we can put her side in there. TJ does that to me all the time. I can let the Kayla answer that one. 
you love them both equally. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Angela definitely probably Brennan, although she liked Booth, she definitely liked you too. We got to work with Emily much more, so our characters got to work with with uh, Bones much more, and as actors we got to work with Emily much more, so so I would think that it would, you know, be uh, Dr. Brennan. Um, and Booth, I didn't really... Hodgins wasn't a big fan. I mean, we really loved each other, but like, they fought a lot, so I would say Dr. Brennan. Yeah. Okay, let's take a question from over here. Go ahead, sir. Of the role that you guys played, was there anything that you would have changed differently in your character development? And did it change you? Good question. Such a good question. <laughs> I don't know if there's much I would have changed about Angela. I feel like we got the opportunity to do so many wonderful things on the series that, you know, just the, the benefit of being on a show for a long time and the writers and how great they were. But um, I just feel, I don't know, I, I think the characters definitely changed you play that person for so many hours of the day. When the show ended, it was very strange to sort of step out of, um, you know, Angela's a real truth teller. She was always sort of, there's no filter. Um, so that part I miss, you know, getting to do that for 12 hours a day. But I don't think there's anything I wouldn't have wanted to have done. No, they did a great job. The writing team yeah. was amazing. I think they did a great job of kind of letting us have that arc and end it that way. Yeah. Yeah, good question. Okay, let's take one over here. Go ahead. Um, I was wondering, uh, which one of the interns did you find the funniest? Which one of the interns did we... Find the funniest. Find the funniest? Oh god, they were all so funny. Um, they're all they're funny. so funny. I mean, every one of them. Uh, Carla so... Gala is really funny. Oh, I mean, yeah. they're all funny. Daisy. Michael Grant Terry is yeah. really funny. Hedge. Hedge is funny. Did you know? Know? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so funny in real life too and they're all good friends and it was like we just laughed so hard with all of them i mean everyone um rodolfo's i mean everyone was so yeah. funny yeah. and fun yeah. like that's a hard one who's your favorite who's the funniest to you ah, not so easy <laughs> <laughs> all right let's take a few more here two more questions Hi, um, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you for the episode where they find the, the deaf girl in the alley, she's covered in blood, and you guys have to figure out what happened to her. I'm hard of hearing, and my sister is deaf, so just it meant a lot to me to see those kinds of characters on the screen. Uh, and then I wanted to ask, hang on, what did I want to ask? Oh, right. <laughs> Uh, sorry, this was not the first time you worked with David Boreanaz. You were in, correct me if I'm wrong, an episode of Angel in the fifth season? Yeah, three episodes, yeah. I was, just, I was just wondering, what was the difference between working with him on Angel compared to when you were cast on Bones? Yeah, um, uh, <laughs> uh, I know, it was, it was trippy for people, like, uh, I played his lawyer in, in uh, a season of Angel, so it was, Angel and his lawyer became Booth and Hodgins, which is kind of funny. Um, but our relationship was kind of similar. I mean, the characters. I I really annoyed Angel as the lawyer. He didn't like. He didn't like me, and I think that was the same. Um, but no, I mean, I, it was it was interesting only in that I got to walk onto a show like Angel, where it had already been a success and doing its thing for a very long time, and then with. Uh, you know, with Bones, I got to watch him develop his character alongside him. So, um, yeah, it was a different experience altogether. But it, it, it is interesting how it, walking in as a guest of someone else's show versus like creating your own show, there is a different kind of energy to that. Um, I think, uh, but no, it was, I don't know. I, it, he was the same. It was the same. It was the same. We were the same. Angel, <laughs> Angel and Booth both didn't like my characters. <laughs> Okay, final question. Go ahead. What was your favorite experiment? <laughs> you did so many more than me. I always think of a pig that bounced and hit you. <laughs> <laughs> frozen turkey. Oh, frozen turkey. But the pig turkey. was the throwing the frozen pig in the chip. Chipper. In the red chipper. Yeah. All oh, right, the frozen turkey. You did a lot of experiments. Yeah, there were a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what was your favorite? Um, I don't think, uh, um, oh, I don't know, the, 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 the one I always think of is the watermelon one where me oh, and yeah. Joel, talk about hysterical, um, Fisher's character, Joel, um, 
we had these watermelons and we had heads on them, like faces on them, and you know, wigs, and we had to like, we were using a hammer to like, smash these watermelons at one point. We're supposed to smash the watermelon, and Cam walks in and he gets all over her. Um, but they were putting gunpowder in the watermelons, and it wasn't exploding enough for them. So sitting there as actors and hearing them go, well, let's crack the watermelon, put more gunpowder in, and we're just like, what is happening? And so you can see, if you watch that episode again, me and Joel, the hammer's barely getting to the watermelon. We're both like flinching, knowing that this thing's going to explode. So I was thinking about that. Oh, <laughs> that one. Yeah. You guys, this was so fun having you here, and, and like, that was great. I, could, I feel like we could do this for another six and a half hours. Um, first of all, like, Vancouver is amazing. Like we could not, and we really mean this, have done that show for as long as we did if it weren't for all of you. So thank you so much for the support all those years. <laughs> yeah. I, gave, I, gave, I gave a few minutes before the well, I think we may have run out of time, so we don't have a lot of time, but we're going to do quickly. But we're turning the lights on because we're going to ask you a few questions. Um, so uh, we have to come up with them. But... Uh, <laughs> five quick questions and so whoever has the answer don't yell it out just raise your hand um and maybe you'll get a prize who knows oh. um but we have to come up with clever and they knew that she you know, know and they're gonna know all the answers <laughs> we were like what's the answer like, that those aren't big uh, no. i mean you guys really know this um but let's start with that just to we'll get okay. the ball rolling so so what is angela's full name and what is jack's full name their full names. All right. So her real name? Yeah. Cookie Noodle in. Okay. Cookie Noodle in. Uh, we have Jack. Oh, what's my full name? Does anyone know? Jack. What? Wait, just raise your hand now, because you're gonna win something. Yes. Jack Stanley Yes, correct. Oh my God. Correct. I think you both win. So where's Brent? Brent's sitting over there. Both of you just run over there. He's got signed scripts for oh each of you. Yeah, yeah. All right, we've only got three more questions, so we can come up with Okay. I have to phrase this correctly. Okay, what was the name of Hodgins' family's wealthy company? Oh, or a company that was worth a lot of money? Right back there. Yeah, in the back. What is it? Try again, so say it again. Cantilever, yes, correct. Yes, you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two more. Um, 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 I don't, I'm, uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, we had, we had a couple of interns that weren't recurring interns. Does anyone know the name of any of those interns or one of the actors that played them? Not Betty White, but no, no, no. <laughs> but um, we're not we're not recurring. Not recurring. Do you remember? We had like a couple of interns early on. No, this is a tough question. Another one. Um, uh, who? Oh, do you have it? Oh, hey. The dude. Nice. Go get it. <laughs> I think we want one more script, right? One more. All right, here we go. Um, okay, it's gonna be about us, like um, uh, Angela and Jack. Um, okay. <laughs> we should have recorded. Where did I? Where did I? Jump over the broomstick in? Yes. Who's got their hands up? Who yelled? PG? Yeah! Woo! That was right. the <laughs> We promise to be come back and we'll come up with better questions. <laughs> 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 thank you so much for spending time with us on this those doors. Thank you very much.
signing at the table. If you want to come say hi, we're still over there. Later. <laughs> Later.